Shut the fuck up. And uh, waterfalls and, and all. Perfect. Perfect. Leave the Sky loves you and you love Leave the Sky, so we gotta love them. Yeah, I know. How about I mute my phone real quick? Hi. We're in a metal band and uh, probably too unclassy for this joint. Can, can we go get a view over here? City of Austin, you're not ready. And uh, you don't even know it. But, uh... I got to know Noah. Noah and I bonded immediately after a few beers. Uh, I ended up uh, actually moving in with Noah in his apartment, uh, a couple other people. And uh, Noah was friends from Kyle, with Kyle from back here. Uh, Kyle lived in Texas and Noah and him were friends and they both moved out to California to pursue music. Kyle and I had already known each other um, before either one of us even lived out in California. We had a mutual friend um, and we met at one of my rehearsal spaces here in Oklahoma before I moved out to California. He was from Texas and he came up and we all hung out. So when I ended up relocating and moving to, to California, Southern California, Kyle was, had, had moved out there separately and was going to MIT up in Hollywood. And so he and I kind of reconnected and we, we wrote stuff and, and recorded stuff on his computer and just at home and, and things like that for probably... I don't know, it was, it was a good maybe six months before we really decided to start a band and and do some things with it. And it all it all came together pretty quickly from there. Like, there wasn't a, a long audition process. It was more like, oh, you're cool and Wayne, you like to drink. Well, you want to be in a band? Wayne was on like, bass. Kyle was on guitar. Wayne was just or, friend of No friend, was on guitar. Kyle was on guitar. Like, and I was playing drums. We didn't have the singer yet kind of thing. And we were jamming, doing this and that. And... Just having a lot of fun. I was practice one, and we were just kind of throwing riffs around, and and we we're like, man, we just need to hear what this sounds like with singing on it. And that's when Noah was like, well, fuck it, I'll get on the mic, whatever. And then that's kind of how that started, and we instantly wrote our first song that and I, that day, I believe it was called Skin on Skin. It was still made it to the first first album, and um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was rad. And, wow, this sounds just like the stuff Noah, you know, was into, and he gave me his number and. You know, I think it was that night or the next day, I called him. We talked for easily an hour, if not more. And, and so we just spoke the same language, you know, like he had just this crazy, excited, bouncy all over the place, and I'm very extroverted, so he and I just, like, totally clicked, and uh, and we're speaking the same language. And I, I was telling people for the next probably month before the band had ever even played a note together in a room or had even had a rehearsal space set up or anything, I was like, yeah, I found we got a drummer, too. Like we were already telling people that just because of how cool he was and how well we got along and it was the best feeling ever. It's what I want to do for my whole life and you know, just have that connection musically and, and personally we were all very driven and committed. Right place at the right time and and it kind of just fell into our laps and it didn't take long to start cranking stuff out so it all happened really quickly. <laughs> So the second show that we played, uh, we started, we headlined the Whiskey Above in Hollywood. Uh, this was back in February of 2003. And uh, from then on, we just started building a following, but hanging out with the guys, you know, just developing that brotherhood. Just, I, it still just makes me great thinking about it back then and how exciting it was, you know, uh, getting out and playing bars. And I mean, you always start out, you know, opening up for other acts and this and that. Well, and it got it got to the point where we were headlining almost immediately. Within months, we were headlining our own shows because we'd open up for these bands and these bands, and the promoters would be able to look around the room and see the crowd staying for us, and see the crowds gravitating towards the stage when we would play. We were just we were hungry. It's the biggest thing I can say. We had drive, we had dedication. You either win in that weekend and two weekends, and 
cranked out some new shit to play at the show and you know be better than the next band or you didn't you know what i mean it was real it was cool it was the shit i fucking i miss it a lot you know we put blue the sky at the top that was number one for all of us everything else was down here at the time us being in our early 20s and austin was in his late teens same thing with kyle that's what we wanted orange county was like this we figured that the way to make it is to start pounding la so we just were playing hollywood over and over again same venue, whiskey, 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 over and over again. And uh, we started to build a following. And it was just, we had a really personal bond with, with our fans. We liked to have the one-on-one -on -one relationship. When we weren't on the stage, we were with them. We weren't, so it was, it was a lot of fun being in that Southern California scene when the metalcore scene started getting big and the, the deathcore scene started coming up and the hardcore scene was coming up too. It was all these different styles of metal it's really exciting to think back about how fun and how uh, just how organic it was and how natural it came to us. We figured that the best way uh, to help get support from the outside, even before getting a record deal, was to get an endorsement, Jägermeister. So the marquee at the Whiskey A Go Go, they changed it to Jägermeister Presents Bleed the Sky. Jägermeister saw that, gave us an endorsement. <laughs> After we got that EP, Kyle put the songs on the EP, uh, Kill Tank, on a website. At the time, the website was called GarageBand.com, not the Garage Band that musicians know today, uh, but it was a it was a marketing networking website for bands, and they would list bands based on the number of plays that you got per song. Well, Kill Tank was up there, number two and three, consistently, and one day we get an email. Uh, headquarters there uh, said he loved Kill Tank want us to send him some more material Kyle sent him leverage shotguns to halos and through the dirt and at that time offered us a record deal uh, we were ecstatic we're a year and a half in I mean we felt like we were rad and badass and shit but it was like really like for a major label this is happening like what's going on like we were just beside ourselves like just shit-eating grins we didn't even care we didn't know we were green willing to just Sign on the dotted line kind of thing, you know what I mean? Not to know what hardship that would bring eventually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just simply, okay, well now we have a label that's going to fund us. That's all, that's all I cared about at the time. That's unfortunately that's part of our, uh, part of the reason why I don't think we were quite as successful is because we weren't patient and we didn't shop around to other labels. Um, we didn't care about any of that shit. We didn't think about it. We didn't read any of the fine print. We didn't... Uh, our lawyer that we hired to look over it who worked for them you know how I mean how fucking how stupid can you be going in like we just went into it like a bunch of stupid kids that that is being given given money to go and record a full length album I mean, we didn't even have enough material for a full length album when we signed the deal for six full length albums like we, we didn't have enough for one so we had to hit the studio immediately and start writing. I quit my full-time job. I said, believe this guy's gonna be 100% at that point in time. Even though that's what we wanted to do and we made that that priority beforehand, I just stopped working. So, because my whole work was put into that band. All of us wanted that. We really desperately wanted to be something that was a new sound. We didn't want to just get it done and get a record deal. We wanted to do something we all love, but sound it awesome and new and bring some real art to the table. We were always about that. Yeah, it was intimidating because we wanted it just to be perfect. This was our magnum opus, so to speak. This was, we're going to drop this on the world and we're going to tell everybody what we're all about. So yeah, it, it, it got nerve-wracking in there sometimes, but greatest experience of my entire life. And that takes a different breed, too. A lot of live musicians can't handle being in the studio. They don't like it or that doesn't feel natural they lose some of that organic life feel because you're playing the same thing over and over and over and then you're cutting and moving this part here and you're you're changing it up I, I just loved every second of it i thought it was really exciting i can't believe this is happening and, and i'm getting to put out something that i i've always held on to that's made me get through my life 
just music and I get to now make it, create it, and hopefully get it out to somebody that could do the same for it. It's just... And, uh, and we just started touring, 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 full time. We got pegged down a couple notches here and there and whether we realize it or not, I think, you know, life shit deals that we sign, that stuff kind of hit us later. But like, as far as getting up there and doing what we do, we were going to swing at you from the bottom like we were at the top every night and we we're going to scare you. You know what I mean? That, that's what our band was known for. Yeah, it was intimidating, but we never let the fear of failure stop us from trying either. You know, we all we always, we wanted more. We wanted bigger stages, bigger crowds. And we kind of jumped right into it. My overwhelmment was with the business aspect of the music industry. Got to be a lot tougher than what we signed up for. Uh, right off the bat for me because we thought that okay we signed this record deal you know we're gonna be touring full time things gonna things are gonna be taken care of for us with agents agents are gonna keep us busy because we're gonna get paid at least something at least be able to pay the bills on tour and so our album is out and you know we dropped the record April 19th of 2005 and we figure we're gonna be busy they're gonna put us as an opener on some big tour or something like that that's not what happened at all we got lost in the shuffle behind all the other bigger bands. So I had to take the bull by the horns and keep us busy. I started booking our shows. Um, and I just kept us busy, 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 trying to get our name out there. We weren't just getting the love and support that we needed. And uh, we would just play anywhere. But I got very comfortable at that point in time, booking shows and knowing what we were capable of as far as draw and guarantees that it helped us move up the ladder. We're a guy that's like, constantly sick on the road because he was like the blood sweat and tears of the business for the band because let's face it management really never did anything so he was like co-managing but really the real manager like when is this going to get any better you know what i mean i mean we're eating really bad we're unhealthy you know what i mean and it just got to be super super hard this you know we weren't making shit he's we're all eating fucking mcdonald's or smoking two packs a day like just bull crap to the liquor and he would constantly be sick so it was just like when he got sick for real, we all kind of blew it off a little bit at the beginning and just like, oh, he's just sick again, you know. He's just, oh, he's fucking always sick. He doesn't take care of himself. You know what I mean? Well, that really just bit us in the ass real quick because it was real this time. And To get sick because he was on stage throwing up, like mid-set having to go over to the side of the stage and Checker had a bucket and he was barfing in the bucket and it's white as snow and sweating like, like, something's wrong sweating not like you're on stage and there's lights and there's smoke and stuff like he was like looked like he was dying on stage and i said you gotta take me to the emergency room my fever's really high nothing's working all i can remember though was a lot of stomach pain i couldn't keep anything down and the doctors thought i had appendicitis and then i blacked out By the time we got there, he was basically in a medically induced coma. They, he had a, I mean, he had, fuck, I remember that just being so fucked up to me, like seeing Wayne that fucked up, and he had a trach in his throat, because he stopped breathing and flatlined, and they had to revive him, so they had to put a trach in, because his lungs were. It was just so gut-wrenching the entire time to, he would wake up in the middle of, you know, being um, sedated, where, First thing you would do is go to rip his fucking cords out and then the, the tubes and all that. We would just have to like hold him down and immediately had to pump more, full of more morphine and this or that. He he ended up not coming out of the hospital. That was the last night he ever played with us. God damn! Thank you so much for. You know, letting us have our friend. It's just one of those moments you just appreciate life and just how easily it can be taken away, you know? Funny, but, like, like he almost died, and that's why he can't play anymore. You know, that's why he couldn't be part of the Murder the Dance album and all this other really cool shit that we did after him. I wish he could have been part of all that, and he just couldn't. I went to a neurologist a couple weeks later. He says, you know, you're not looking good. You know, you, you might not be able to play guitar. Permanent nerve damage all through here. September of that year, Kyle already left the band. 
and so did Dalen, the bass player. And it's Noah, Austin, and I. Uh, that that in my life is probably one of the the most difficult conversations I've ever had to witness somebody else deliver. It was him having to quit, you know? And so I I'll just I'll never forget the look on that dude's face. Like he was trying to convince talk himself out of it while he was doing it. You could see him fighting that battle. And we're at this uh restaurant all eating and I told them that I'm gonna have to quit bleed this guy. I don't think I could ever play guitar again. At the end of the bridge what are you guys doing at the end of the bridge? Do you want, hey, he's asking right now, do you want to set up the side? We have, we yeah, finished where I want it. Because Why don't you just play along from the beginning and just concentrate yeah. on the parts that, that the I know that. And... Yeah, because there's a lot of parts that I still I know that I want to tighten up a lot more. Yeah, don't worry about, don't wear yourself out of the first. I was talking to him, he's like, I got something, I want to talk to you about something. And I was like, okay. And he's like, well, I'm leaving the band. And I'm just like, why? Like, what's going on? Like, why, why would, you guys are rolling now. Like, it seems like you guys are gaining momentum. And Wayne had gotten sick, you know. And I wasn't aware of, of a lot of the inner turmoil that may have been that caused, like, Disco to leave or Kyle. I never understood why until after I was in and was talking with, like, you know, after I got to California, I got the crash course on what kind of happened. But I'm like, well, have you told them? He's like, no. I haven't. I have, I'm gonna sit with them tonight. We're gonna go to a bar and talk about it. He's like, I just, I got to get out. Got a call the next day, and it was Noah. And uh, he's just like, hey man, I, uh, he's like, so Kyle talked to you, didn't he? And I was like, yeah. And he's just like, well, we're we're interested. He's like, we're gonna have tryouts for guitar. He's like, you can come down, you can try out, and uh, he's like, but we're also you got the bass player gig if you need it. And I was like, what, wait, what? And he's like, well, Disco, Disco quit. And I was like, why? What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Like, what's going on? What can be so fucking bad that you guys are rolling as well as you are, you sound as good as you are, you're as tight as you are, and you can't get along? I personally feel, feel like we were going through a time in a transition where we were lost I mean you're left with two-fifths of what it was and it was gonna wind up being a different band and during that time uh, we wound up I think there was a guy from Colorado that was gonna do it uh, gonna be one of the guitar because we were looking for two guitar players we were and the guy from Colorado he was in then he was out and then we had a guy from Texas Dave great guitar player great dude got to know him really well he was in and then he was out but he also brought rob with him and rob was in and he was in through the recording process and then uh after dave left we got a hold of justin process or the recording process we go up we laid down the drums and just walking into that you know that studio it was it was really cool you know like this is actually happening you know you walk through in the platinum records all over the walls and then you're in in there watching him through glass you know play the tracks that you're you're just riffing off through on the other side of the glass so you can lay down the tracks and that was cool like just to just to experience it it was really neat cool. and uh, most of the time it was a three-person deal uh Noah and I and Austin tracked the majority of the record. This was actually the first gamble, like the first real loose end, not a good falling back point or like safety net gamble that I ever took in my life. It kind of makes me a bit of a square, but that's who I am. You know, like I don't, I don't, I'm not going to step somewhere if I don't know what the fuck's there. Like, no, it says, put, take your dick out, throw it over your shoulder, let's fucking go. You know, shit like that. You know what I mean? I love to walk out there and be like, yeah, you don't know me. 
you're gonna know me after this. That first 30 seconds is, is kind of nerve-wracking, every at least for me, every single night. And then about 30 seconds in, that, that dopamine dumps and you just go, Phew. You could be playing awesome one place, but it just doesn't hit. And then when you're playing, you know, decent at another and it hits, like the energy just feeds off of itself. And, and then you have control over the crowd and, you know, they're up close and you're, you're playing and enjoying it. Just that feeling, you know, when you'd hit a stop, and the lights would go out and it was dead silent only for you to come back in and punch them in the mouth. And that right there, that feeling is probably, it's probably the thing I miss the most. And I knew that it was coming before it happened. Um, we had to cancel some dates on tours and stuff because the money just wasn't there and none of us could afford to take a loss you know I don't think we got a real fair shot on murder the dance just because of the way everything went down and it seemed like we were always trying to do something with half of what it took to do it with Austin and with Justin, it's hard to look him in the face because, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I feel like I let them down. And I, for a long time, I felt like I let all of my family down and all the people that gave a shit. But hindsight 2020, I did exactly what I needed to do. When Ryan and I made the decision and It, God, it was heartbreaking, like, to see Justin and Austin like that, you know? Like, just, like, looking at each other, like, is this really fucking happening right now? And and I was doing all the talk, and Ryan didn't stop me. It, you know, he didn't try. Wayne would have been in there if he could have, but health-wise, he couldn't. And everything that he built, everything that Noah built, and Austin, and Justin and I came in and continued to build, just... I just know it, feeling like you let them down. That's as heavy as anything, you know, I, I mean. I really do regret. I wish it could have gone differently, but I don't, but I don't know how. Like, I think about, think back about it a lot, but I don't know how it could have gone any differently. I just wish it would have, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you're just talking about the music, I think if we'd have been pushed the right way, that would have carried us a lot farther than, than we got all this shit happened because I think this is an important story. I mean, even from an industry standpoint, from a bunch of young kids that got taken advantage of and a band that could have really done something big have we been on our shit mentally and business-wise and just put in the right fucking hands rather than just instantly written off to the side. You know, we signed a bad deal. All this shit that we know now. Um... Oh man, it's the best feeling in the world. It's been a long time coming, been wanting to get back with the guys for a while and uh, having the most amazing time ever. Fans seem to be into it and uh, we're just pumped to keep playing and putting out good material for everybody. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, every one of the shows has been uh, high intensity, which is what I'm all about. Um, 
every single member's been bringing it. So it's just been it's been a hell of a time. It's been really fun. Uh, I feel like I'm hanging on for dear life every uh, every show, trying to keep up with Austin and uh, Noah. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, it's been especially uh, rewarding seeing people singing the newer stuff, which I didn't expect. You're giving a shit about a bunch of uh, older dudes, you know, putting out a heavy ass record. But it's been uh, it's been sick, dude. That's that's definitely been the perk so far. Just kind of just seeing how everybody feels. We've uh, seamlessly hit that evolution from you know, from back then to now and, and what's happening now. So we've been able to, to deliver 10 years later a, a relevant record, which I think is really cool. Like anybody, I'd like to see the album do great, but at the same time, I almost kind of don't want that. Like, you know, we, we love where we're at and we went into this with the intent that, you know, we're doing this for us. It's been 10 years, let's do it. And hopefully the fans will be behind it, we'll see. Uh, just that I'm, uh very humbled to be part of it, uh, especially as the newest member, and uh, appreciate um, the welcoming all the fans have given me so far. I'd love for us to be able to play out as much as we can, put out as much music as we can, and just have the most fun doing it. You know, when it stops being fun, it stops being worth it. And, but at a way cooler level than we ever were before, and like actually making a few dollars, like that's weird. You know what I mean? That's, I'm, this band knows nothing about that. So that's been really cool. Like we had a few days where we were able to, you know, get an Airbnb and like had a day off and like we just like fuck it, let's use band money and get steaks. To where before it was like, here's five dollars. Like, can we all get a burger? Like, you know, what I mean, like that shit was crazy. The, to think like that was a thing for a year, the whole career, and we did it for that long was is insane to think now as older dudes. Like, there's no way. Uh, I'm just so grateful and blessed to be back doing this, and we're honored. And I say this all the time. So I don't mean to sound redundant, but I mean it from the heart. We wouldn't be here without our fans. Uh, you guys make Bleed the Sky happen, and uh, just we're so grateful for the love you've given us. Whatever happens after this is just icing. We've already achieved every goal we ever imagined. And again, we'll just, we'll ride whatever train pulls up, you know?